Welcome to today's video, guys. This has been a long requested, long time planned episode that we are finally sitting down to film for you guys. Today, we are gonna be talking about how to properly read your boating weather, your wind conditions, the sea conditions to know when it's safe or not safe to go out. My name's Amanda, my name is Emily, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. jump right into this and talk about understanding weather and is it safe to take your boat out? Because guys, we get that question a lot, whether it's in person or over comments or whatnot, people are like, can I go out five miles? Can I go out 10 miles? And it's like, guys, what if the seas are this? What if the wind is that? What if this is the boat I have? Exactly, there's way too many variables to think of it as like, how far can I go? That's exactly. not something we should be so, talking about. So what we're gonna do is we are going to first basically go through some very important definitions, but we're gonna explain what these mean, how to understand them, and then we're gonna give some real life examples on when you should or shouldn't go out. Something extremely important that so many people do, and I'm like, please don't do this, and guys, please don't do this. And it's okay if you do, because <laughs> we're teaching you. We're teaching you now. So many people use regular weather apps to check the weather. They'll be like, oh, but my weather app says it's only five miles per hour per wind. But guys, those apps are not designed to tell you the wind gust offshore and the wave height, and you are not gonna get the proper information or the proper wind from your regular weather apps. So you need to download proper apps. We will put a list in the description box of different apps we use. No specific preference, no specific order. Just pick what you prefer. A few that we definitely use off the top of our head, we've got Windy, we have wind finder, we have buoy weather, buoy data, data and, and boating, boating, weather. boating weather. Yeah, those. So it's yeah. a handful right there. And Just we'll go ahead and link those for you guys. One other app to definitely get is live radar apps, guys, because then you can, not the predicted future, I'm talking about the live radar, because if you're out there and you see a big black cloud coming your way, you can check your live radar and be like, is it coming towards me or is it not? Yes, and the app that we do use for this, we just use one app, is My Radar. Now this is also assuming you don't have radar on your boat, but it's always good to have the apps downloaded as backup in case the radar on your boat isn't working. Now we are gonna get into this and talk about some points of consideration to look at before going offshore. And we are going to define and describe each one. We've got wind speed, we have wind gust, wind direction, what else do we have? Wave height, the type of boat you have, and the skill of the driver or the captain. We're gonna go ahead and start with wind speed. Now wind speed is going to be pretty self-explanatory. How fast is the wind traveling? This is also talking about your sustained wind speed. So what is it consistently traveling? We're not talking, what is it gusting? So let's say our wind speed is 15 knots. That's gonna be around 17 miles per hour. So that is something you wanna think about is if, if when, when you're using your boating weather apps, because you're gonna have downloaded some of them, a lot of them are gonna give wind speed in knots and not miles per hour. One knot is around 1.15 miles per hour, so if it says 15 knots, it's around 17 miles per hour, and understanding being able to read knots and miles per hour, it gets really easy really fast. Some of the apps do allow you to change it out, but they all pretty much come knots ready to go, and I've never changed it, and that's how I read the wind. Next we have the wind gust. Now the wind gust is the peak of the wind and it will not blow for more than 20 seconds. So maybe it's blowing 15 knots, but it's gusting 20. So at some points and intervals during the day, there will be gusts of 20 knots of wind. Our next point to really think about and consider is wind direction. This one's huge. This one is, you will explain more later very on. Very huge. Wind direction means what direction the wind is traveling from. So when on your apps will say the wind is a southeast wind, what that means is the wind is traveling from the southeast to the northwest. So that also might take a little bit of time to kind of grasp and be able to turn around quickly in your head, but just remember that a north wind is traveling from the north to the south, 
a south wind is traveling from the south to the north. Now we have wave height. Wave height is basically the height of the wave from the bottom of the wave to the top of the wave. And again, this is something you're only gonna be seeing if you download the proper apps to understanding the sea conditions. We also have the type of boat that you own. Now guys, are you on a pontoon boat, a center console, a sport fish, a cruiser, a deck boat, a kayak, a kayak, who knows? So definitely take into consideration the length of your boat and the type of boat you have. And also very important, what's the last one? The skill of the driver. Are you a weekend warrior that goes out a couple times in the summer? Are you a charter boat captain? Are you a tournament fisherman? So what kind of conditions have you seen? What have you been out in? What are you comfortable with? What are you comfortable with in your boat? So a lot of this also is gonna come down to listening to yourself what you know you can do, what you know your family can handle, what your friends can handle, and most importantly, let's just try not to get seasick. Before we get into examples of weather conditions and whether or not we should be going out in them, we're gonna talk about how to read your weather apps. So for reference- Your boating weather apps. Yes. So for starters, as an example, I'm gonna show you guys how to read the Windy app, and then Amanda, I'm gonna show you your wind Yes, that was a- that was a squid brain moment. I'm doing Windy, she's doing Windfinder, let's get to it. On the top half of the app, it's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. We have the location, the date, the sunrise, the sunset, the temperature outside, and what it feels like. We also have some overall weather conditions. Looks like we have some light rain blowing 13 knots from the east. Now the bottom half of the app is where we're gonna get into the specifics. I really like this app, unique to it is that you can actually see the predicted weather by hour. That first row is gonna be each hour, the next row is gonna be your predicted rain. Maybe it's sunny, maybe it's partly cloudy. Today it looks like we have a little bit of rain coming our way. The next row down is gonna be your wind speed. You guys can see that number 13. That stands for 13 knots, so it's gonna be a sustained wind of 13 knots. Following that number is a slightly smaller number 13. Now that is going to be your wind gust. Sometimes it will gust the same that it's blowing, sometimes it will gust more. If we look over at nine and 10 o'clock, it's gusting 14 but it was blowing 13. You will notice as you use this app, the color will change based on the wind speed and gust. A darker blue color will be less wind, and when we get into that orange and yellow and really bright red colors, that's when it's gonna be really starting to blow. Following wind gust, we have wind direction. You guys see that arrow pointing to the left? That is our wind blowing from the east to the west. To sum up what we've looked over so far, we have 13 knots from the east gusting 13 knots. The rest of the information is pretty straightforward. We have air temperature, rain, atmospheric pressure, and lastly, sea temperature, which I like that one. That one's pretty cool. 83 degrees, that's a little chilly for us. We hope that made sense on how to properly read and understand the app Windy. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for Windfinder, which just looks a little bit different. Now we're gonna take a minute and look at the Windfinder app. Now this app is gonna give us predictions of the weather every three hours, pretty much reading from top to bottom. So starting on that left column, we just have the time of day, 2 a.m., 5 a.m., 8 a.m., and it's gonna be color coordinated based on the wind. And that's something you guys can kind of see, but we have that blue color bleed into that light blue turquoisey color. That turquoisey color means it's gonna be blowing a little bit more at 11 a.m. than it was at 2 a.m. Now here's what you really wanna look at is that little black arrow next to the time of day. That's gonna be identifying for you the wind direction. When we're reading this arrow, I would say it looks like we have an east maybe a little bit northeast, but pretty much an east wind. We have the wind traveling from the east to the west because that's the direction the arrow is pointing. Our next column, we have the wind speed. The wind speed is gonna be that really big number on top, 11 knots, 13 knots, 14 knots. Underneath that, in a little bit of a smaller number, we have our wind gust. And this one actually makes it easy for us because it says max 11 knots, max 13 knots. Now on this specific day, it looks like it's gusting the same as the wind speed, so it doesn't really look like there really is much of a gust at all. The next column over, we have the weather conditions. So maybe that's cloudy, partly cloudy, a little bit of rain, sunny, just something to kind of look at. Moving on, we have the air temperature. How hot is it outside? Something that I do like a lot about this app is it does give us wave direction and wave height. That little hollowed out arrow is gonna be wave direction. So our wave direction is actually very similar to our wind direction. We have pretty much a straight east wave direction. And next to it, we have the wave height, 1.7 feet, two feet. 
Now something really unique about this specific day, I would say, is our wave direction and our wind direction are traveling in the same direction. That's gonna make for calmer seas. So we have a wind direction of pretty much straight east and our wave direction is also traveling from the east and you can clearly see it's only giving us max two foot seas. Underneath the wave height, we have little numbers, four seconds, four seconds. They all say four seconds. Now that is how far apart the waves are. So we have two foot seas at four seconds. That's basically how spread out they are. Four seconds is can be a kind of tight sea, but with two foot waves, you're really not gonna feel it. Lastly, this app also gives us tides. That very first one looks like that's telling us the bottom of low tide, and then we've got a rising tide, and then we've got the top of high tide. Now it's time for the real life scenarios. You ready? I am ready. In order to give you guys some nice, clean, clear examples, because everyone's different, every situation's different, we're going to have three different people we're talking about. We have three characters. Three characters. So first the first character one is Family, family Man, Man Joe. Joe. Family Man Joe is a dad, he's got some kids, a wife, he has a 23 foot deck boat. Our next character is Charter Captain Bob. Now Charter Captain Bob has been doing this for 20 years, but he still has to worry about his anglers and his clients on his boat. He's running a 40 foot sport fish. Next we have Tournament Captain Harry. Now Harry is a tournament fisherman and he's got money on the line. And those tournament guys, they go out all the time in a lot of conditions, but they're always out there with other experienced captains and anglers. Tournament Captain Harry runs a 36 foot center console. For our first example, we are gonna place ourselves in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So east coast of Florida. East coast of Florida. We are gonna have an east wind, 13 knots, gusting 15. That means the wind is traveling from the east to the west. That means that if you are in East Florida, the wind is blowing from the ocean towards the land. We also have five foot seas every seven seconds. So that's definitely quite a bit of seas. Every seven seconds does spread it out a little bit. So they're gonna feel a little bit more like big rollers. There is gonna be space between each wave, but a five foot sea is still a five foot sea. Now in this specific situation, if I were Family Man Joe, I would say this is not my day to go out. If I do wanna get on the water, I'm gonna go do a little cruise on the intercoastal with my family. Maybe go get a nice dinner. Maybe go check out a sandbar or two. If I were Tartar Captain Bob, I am 100% going out there. I'm confident in my skills and my boat. Also, because I have a nice big boat, I'm not too worried about my anglers getting seasick, but these other types of conditions that I do wanna watch my anglers in case they get seasick. Now, if I were Tournament Captain Harry, I am 1 million percent going out. Tournament Captain Harry, he's got money on the line, always goes out. We just said that the wind was blowing from the east at 10 to 12 knots. Now, let's take this exact scenario and flip it. It's now blowing 10 to 12 knots from, from the, the west. west. Now think about it, we're on the east coast of Florida, the wind is blowing from the west, means that it's blowing from the land towards the ocean. This is where it gets interesting. If you are Family Man Joe and it's blowing from the west, Family Man Joe could probably make it out. However, he would need to stay close to shore. Guys, when the wind is blowing off the land, that is going to slow down the wind when you're close to shore. Yes. Now, however, offshore, by the time you get further offshore, that wind is gonna start to pick up and these are gonna pick up and you're gonna be feeling that 10 to 12 knots of wind. But if you stay near shore, Billy Man Joe can probably go out. There have literally been days that we have fished in 25 knot winds, 25 knot west winds out of Fort Lauderdale. And it will be almost flat calm straight off the beach. But once you get five, 10 miles offshore, then you are dealing with those big five foot seas or more. So when you do have a west wind coming over the land, that is something to think about. Well, if I stay close to the shore, close to the beach, you will be somewhat protected. And because it's coming from the west, you can kind of get out there and say, well, it's nice and calm out here. I'm gonna head a little further, still feeling okay, heading a little further, time to get bumpy, trying to get, starting to get bumpy. I'm just gonna head a little bit back. And that's the nice thing about a west wind or a wind that's coming over the land. Our next example is going to take us south to Marathon, Florida. It is blowing 15 knots, gusting 16. We have three foot seas at five seconds apart. Now, wait a minute, let's think about this. Why do we have three foot seas, but 15 knots of wind in Marathon, Florida, when in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we had what, 10, 10 to 12 knots. knots of wind with five foot seas? Here's why. We also have to look at the structure of the sea floor. So let's just give a little bit of a quick lesson for those of you guys that don't know. Off of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the drop off is fast, it's soon, and it's huge, which means there's a ton of open water and there is not a lot of reef for the waves to get slowed down on. 
Think about it, guys. If you're off the east coast of Florida and you're standing on the beach in literally zero feet of water or one inch of water, I kid you not, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, straight two miles out, you will hit 500 feet of water. That is crazy. That's an insane drop off. So literally those waves that are crashing on the beach, they were in 500 feet of water not that long ago. Yes. Now let's go back down to the Keys in Marathon, Florida. We have a ton of reef. We have a ton of coral that's really slowing down that water. And we also have a very gradual slope to deep water. It takes about eight miles more than triple what it does in Fort Lauderdale to go from zero feet of water all the way out to 500 feet of water. To recap, in Marathon, Florida, it is blowing from the east at 15 knots, gusting 16, three foot seas. What does Family Man Joe do, Amanda? Family Man Joe. Now, we still have three foot seas. He still only has, what do we say, a 24, a 24 foot, foot cruiser, cruiser deck, boat. deck boat. So if I were Family Man Joe, I would definitely fish the bay and Stay the in shore, fish the bridges. I really wouldn't want to poke around onto the reef that much. Three foot seas are still three foot seas. Charter Captain Bob would definitely go. Guys, 15 knots on the east in the Florida Keys, that's like our standard. We have that a lot down there, and those charter captains, they know how to handle the seas and the conditions. And at that point, it's going to come down to, once they get out there, if the clients are happy and catching fish, it's going to be a good day. And Tournament Captain Harry, once again, he He's is going. always going. And there is one more thing I do want to touch on. So we did say we have three foot seas in Marathon when it's blowing 15 knots. Now that is true for maybe up to five miles offshore, eight miles Very offshore. True. But if we went 15, 20 miles offshore, those seas are going to be much larger. We might have five to six foot seas out there. So that is something to think about as well as blowing 15. Maybe near shore, it's gonna be three foot seas up to five miles, and then past that, it will get six foot seas. I hope that made sense. Basically, when you guys see that wave height on your weather prediction apps, do not take those and think that that's what it's gonna be everywhere. It's not, guys. In the bay, you might have a little one foot chop. On the reef, you might have three foot seas, and then if you head offshore, guys, you could end up in some big five, six foot rollers. Our last example is a fun one, and we wanted to throw this in there for you guys because so far, Tournament Captain Harry has gone, gone out in every, every condition. condition. We are in, let's just say, Miami, Florida. We're fishing one of the biggest sailfish tournaments of the year, the Jimmy Johnson. It's blowing 25 knots, gusting 30, from the south. We got eight foot seas. Guys, Family Man Joe is not even leaving the dock. No, no, no intercoastal cruises, no sandbar days. Do not leave the dock when it's blowing 25 to 30 knots. At least I would prefer not to. Because, well, I mean, depending on where your boat is, you might have a hard time even getting off the dock. Exactly. Then we have Charter Captain Bob. Charter Captain Bob, he's definitely not going either. No, he's not Now, go. does he have the skill? Yes. Does he have the boat? Yes. Probably. But does he really want to put his anglers through that? Probably, Probably not. not. Lastly, we have Tournament Captain Harry. Is he going? Yeah, he's, he's going. going. Tournament Captain Harry is the captain that is gonna go out in pretty much anything except a hurricane. And this is true because we have fish with enough tournament captains to know that they do this. Now, they do have a lot of skill, they have the boats for it, they usually go out with full professional crew, multiple professional crew, mates, anglers, there's usually multiple captains on board as well. But there will be a day when he will not go out and that will probably be a hurricane. Do I recommend or agree with what Captain Harry does? Tournament Captain Harry? Probably not. Moral of the story, guys, is you cannot compare yourself to other people or other boats. Maybe your best friend, your buddy, your neighbor is like, yeah, man, I'm going out and you don't want to go and you're not comfortable. Guys, don't go. If there's one thing that we talk about when we're on the boat together, the boat is called the no ego zone. You cannot have an ego. You cannot be on your high horse. You have to be aware of your confidence and your skill level before you step foot in those conditions. Something else that I do wanna mention is that over time you will learn what the wind speed is going to translate to what wave height you have, really based on your location and your geography. So a lot of this really does come down to what your seafloor is like, how much coral you have, how deep it is, what your drop-offs are like and maybe the shape of the land for where you are. So we have learned over time what 25 knots from the west does for us, what 15 knots from the east does for us. Sometimes you don't wanna to pay too much attention to wave height 
because it's really going to be specific to your geography. But over time, you will learn, this is where I live, this is what 25 knots from the east looks like, this is what 5 knots from the west looks like. My recommendation is to get a notebook and every time you go out, feel how you feel about the conditions. What do you think? Oh, that was a great day. It was a little choppy. It was too rough. I never want to go again. And then check your weather and see, okay, so it was blowing 15 from the east. It had this predicted wave height and I hated it. So now you'll know never to go again in those conditions. And one more thing I do want to note on that is it might predict 15 knots from the east, but you might get out there and it might be 25 from the east because the weatherman sometimes is wrong. We want this video to be as generalized as possible so you guys can take the information and do with it as you please. But there's one more thing that adds to the layer of complexity and that's tide. Guys, we could literally make a 30 minute video if we added tide and current and even more conditions to think about. But that's not the purpose of this video. No. So real quickly, I'll just give you a brief scenario to consider with tide. If we have tide and wind direction going the same direction, it's going to have a lower wave height. If we have tide against the wind direction, we're gonna create some chop. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have the difference from a one foot sea to a six foot sea, but just keep that in mind. Tide is also something to consider, especially if you have inlets. We hope you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully now you can make a better judgment call when it's time to take the family out, the kids out, or maybe go fish a tournament. We want you guys to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.